Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Community College News. I'm Ethan Hazlitt. Thanksgiving is only a few days away and many students will be traveling this weekend to spend time with their families. Can't beat a Thanksgiving dinner. Yesterday, students and staff who may not be able to make the trip home could enjoy a traditional turkey dinner in the cafeteria. Many churches and volunteer organizations will also be hosting dinners this weekend. Check your local events calendar for details. Today, cell phones are more common than ever. Safety concerns are being raised and people are being told to use cell phones less often. Jill Constantine reports. Health Canada reports that cell phones could be dangerous. A recent study suggests they may cause cancer. Hello? They recommend that consumers limit the length of phone calls and instead send text messages. I don't even have home phones, so cell phone is my only mode of communication. I'm self-employed and I use a cell phone all day, every day, but I keep my questions and time on it quite short. I need my cell phone. <laughs> cell phones emit non-ionizing radiation. The International Agency for Research on Cancer recently classified this type as possibly carcinogenic. The number of cell phone users in Canada has grown to more than 24 million since 1987. Despite the warnings, some people won't change their habits. You're going to get brain cancer whether you use a cell phone or you don't use a cell phone. If it's in your body, you're going to get it. It depends on your cells. I don't really think it has anything to do with cell phones, to be honest with you. Health Canada reminds consumers that the scientific evidence is far from conclusive. They say more research is needed. In Woodstock, Jill Constantine, Community College News. Chronic diseases like cancer and diabetes now account for six out of nine deaths in the world. Here in New Brunswick, nearly 25% of the population have some form of chronic disease. Mike Truziak reports on how communities and the government are trying to combat these global killers. There is dancing, massaging, and more dancing. The wellness kickoff event held in Woodstock this week was aimed at increasing awareness about several health issues, including obesity, smoking, and mental health. I think they were probably a little lost. Kathy Sherwood Orson has worked in mental health counseling for 17 years. She says the public still has not grasped the idea of personal wellness. I think they need to get the idea of what wellness means, because it's not just about being on a diet or exercising. It's about learning to care for yourself, like our ambassador said. It's about learning that it's all around, taking good care of yourself, getting enough sleep, eating enough, being confident and connected to your community. It's about wellness. It's all around. Some health concerns are a personal responsibility, but people seeking psychiatric help for mental illnesses might be waiting over six months to see a psychiatrist. Premier David Allward says the government does have a plan to address the long wait times for mental health. The first investments this year are in the neighborhood of a million dollars uh, and we're um, working with communities and the mental health organizations within communities uh, to help us develop the strategies that people are going to need as, they go, as we go forward. In 2009, one out of every seven dollars from the province's total income was spent on health care, or roughly two and a half billion dollars, the fourth highest in Canada. But New Brunswick also had one of the lowest health expenditure per person at $3,900. In Woodstock, Mike Trusiak, Community College News. Fredericton is hosting the 2011 Canadian Under-18 Soccer Championships this week. Up to a thousand people are descending on the capital city for 50 soccer games. More than 400 players and 100 officials from 20 clubs across the country. Fredericton Mayor Brad Woodside told CCN that he expects a significant economic impact on the city's hotels, restaurants and retail outlets. The tournament runs from October 5th to the 10th. Here are some other events happening at campus locations across the province.
Tech innovator and co-founder of Apple, Steve Jobs, passed away on Wednesday. Apple products have become an integral part of the day-to-day -day lives of millions of people. We took to the halls with an iPhone 4 to see how people were reacting to the news. It's very sad that you said he passed away, especially considering his battle, his long time battle with the big was cancer and cancer. I think it's a terrible tragedy. Not many people realize, but a lot of the technology we rely on on a daily basis was actually originally developed or thought of by him. And it's a real surprise because he's made such an impact on the technological world, but an even greater impact on the world at large because of, I mean, everybody I know has an iPhone or a Mac computer or some sort of software developed by Steve Jobs. And Jobs has been suffering from pancreatic cancer since 2004. Since the news of his death, public tributes have been paid by such notable people as President Barack Obama, Bill Gates, and Steven Spielberg. A group concerned with climate change in Carlton County is frustrated. A public meeting they organized earlier this week was met with little interest. Reporter Kyle DuPont was one of the few to attend. A group from the Fallsbrook Center planned three public meetings to talk about adapting to climate change in rural New Brunswick. Ten people showed up for the first meeting and most were from their organization. This concerns organizer Emily Shapiro. This is an issue that I think we're tackling more and more. Um, we brought up uh, the disconnect with, um, with reality. I think we spend a lot of time uh, on the computer. We spend a lot of time in front of the television. We spoke with some students who didn't attend the meeting and they said they were concerned about climate change. All I know is it's getting hotter and hotter. Uh, we, uh, nothing really, I guess. Um, I just know that our climate is changing because of global warming. Shapiro believes that youth are not engaging in the discussion about climate change. She says that they view it as such a huge problem that it is hard to play a viable, active role in the solution. But it also seems like a problem that maybe doesn't, doesn't affect us or doesn't relate to our daily lives. The environmental group remains optimistic and will hold another public meeting in December. They hope for more involvement from the community. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. Student representative councils at some campuses met for the first time this week, including here at MBCC Woodstock. Councils across the province are seeking student volunteers. Social events, sports and recycling are some of the communities that are looking for new members. Anyone interested in helping out should contact their campuses SRC coordinator. As we head into the cold and flu season, stopping the spread of germs is increasingly important. We talked to Linda Tricartin, a health coordinator at NBCC Woodstock, about the most effective way to wash your hands. Um, I'm going to sh uh, demonstrate the proper technique for hand washing. Hand washing is, your mo is the most vital step in preventing infection. So we're going to start with turning on warm water, not hot. A comfortable temperature. And I'm moisten your hands. Remove any jewelry or watches or push your watch up. You're going to get your soap. Lather. You want to lather and cause friction between your fingers, uh, the sides of your hands, uh, your nails and your cuticles. You want to get a scrub there. And you do this for about 20 seconds. Sometimes we say do the alphabet twice and that would be about 20 seconds. And then you're going to rinse. You want to keep your hands down so it doesn't splatter all over. And you will have your paper towel or cloth. Take an extra one to have. You're going to dry your hands. This also creates fr friction to help get rid of any germs get between your fingers. And you're going to toss that and you're going to turn your tap off with a clean cloth and you're all done. Living with other people when you have severe allergies can sometimes lead to problems. Unfortunately, the people around you are not always considerate of your needs. In this editorial, Jocelyn Turner talks about how to keep your kitchen allergy friendly. You may expect sitting down to a home-cooked meal to be a relaxing time, 
But for people with allergies, it may be a call to arms, a time to have your EpiPen ready to charge. A roommate could be cooking a meal and not realize they could make someone sick or worse. Uh, I'd like not to die. <laughs> It's not uncommon for students living together to be unaware of likes, dislikes, and even allergies. To become a more courteous roommate, there are a few things you can do. Ugh. Clean up after themselves, you know, not offer me food with garlic in it. Well, I kind of expect them not to play with my food, not to touch anything just in case they might not know, and they might put something I really can't take. Before you even start cooking, Always let your roommates with allergies know. They will appreciate knowing before they slip an anaphylactic shock. Once you're done your meal, the first thing you should do is wash your dishes. You do not want people sneezing on you, and people with allergies sure don't want to touch your dishes and end up in the hospital. Next, clean your sink. There's nothing more annoying than reaching into the hot water to do your dishes and end up with skin irritation. Be certain to wash down all surfaces with disinfectant spray. A clean environment is a safe environment. Following these simple rules when cooking in the kitchen can prevent a lot of medical emergencies. It can also maintain harmony among you and your roommates. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. That's our show for today. For more work from MBCC journalism students, visit our website at www.jschoolmbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.